right off the bat, I know this is a very clickbaity title and I'm not going to make you wait to the end of the episode to find out. So in last week's episode, you saw Matt at the very end talking about fairing as he's working here in our forward birth and how we have just been like endlessly, endlessly working at it and not really getting anywhere. Regrets. Full of regrets. <laughs> so overstanding. So here we are. Um, day, what? 20,000 of standing, something like that. I don't know. It is ridiculous how much we've had to do. So I myself was working in our guest head, which I thought was so, so close to the primer stage, minus the coves that Matt has been putting in. Like I have been doing the large surfaces, he coves. I had done one pass over every surface with our fairing compound gave it a sand and I honestly thought it was there. But we just wanted to put that blue dicom liquid on one more time to make sure. And in my head I'm thinking, I'm like, this is gonna be so easy, it's gonna come right off. It's so perfect, I'm so happy in a great mood because we can check this room off. And I started sanding it and all it was was remaining blue low spots and that just broke me. This broke me, uh, the dye. Yeah. That broke me. I'm... I'm done. So there I was thinking that, you know, like, Matt was going to be able to step in, put his coves in, primer was going to go on, just to be faced with the fact that I was almost, like, back to square one. I was going to have to go and fair the whole surface and sand it all again. And I couldn't handle it. So I left that bathroom, and I went over to our master bathroom, uh, crawled in a cupboard, and just started crying. <laughs> And although I did have my camera on it, I'm not the kind of person that will like normally film that side of me. But uh, if I had, it probably would have looked a little something like this. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I don't know why I crawled in a cupboard. I thought it was private. See if I can muster up some tears here. <laughs> this might work. That was dusty. Oh god. Try the tears won't come. <laughs> okay, yeah, this isn't gonna happen, but anyway, I was crying. But that was yesterday, and today we are going to actually give ourselves a break from boat work. Tucker is coming on his truck to pick us up, and we're gonna go hiking at some trails over by the Bay Bridge, get ourselves outside, forget about ferrying at least for the day. Until tomorrow, where I have to come in and continue again. And to be honest, I think the tears are coming. I am so, so over this. I cannot wait until we move on to the next phase. This is the first time we've gotten Matt out of the marina for a social activity in two weeks. Yeah, in two weeks. <laughs> we tried for a sunny day. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to get outside. Oh, it's never going to end. So the trees are just starting to bloom. It was supposed to get clear skies. I guess they didn't come, but we are about to get to the beach with some really good views of the bridge, so at least we still have that to look forward to. <gasps> okay. Aww. Aww. You're so cute. Hi. You're cute. Oh, there's a little fawn. Oh, yeah. And now we've worked up a good appetite for ourselves hiking. It's time to get some of our favorite Mexican food on the island. Jess said she's sick of hearing me complain of the old uh, are we there yet type of thing. Um, 
With fairing. With fairing. It's been three months now of fairing. I don't know how she's done it for so long because it's driving me absolutely insane. The idea was to get me onto a different project, which is going to lift my spirits and get me all excited for the boat build again. What I'm doing right now is just trying to make these edges straight for our hardwood inserts, which eventually will be put in here. And I'll kind of go over how we're doing that. I don't know if you can come around and see how this edge is. Yeah, that's just about perfect. Through all the different sanding we've done on these surfaces, um, we've kind of distorted this edge uh, where these inserts are gonna be. You can kind of get an idea of what we're doing. This is the general, right now this is covered with release uh, tape, but- uh, And this is just pine. This is just pine. Gives you an idea of what the profile is for our door openings, what it's gonna look like. And the idea is we're gonna have hardwood. They're gonna be about three quarters of an inch to 19 millimeters thick of hardwood being exposed on the edge here. And then we'll have the actual door opening. But what we gotta do is we gotta get this edge perfect. So when that goes in, it'll be bonded in. This is actually one of the few times we are using epoxy because it, it adheres to wood so much better. But when these little inserts get put in there, I wanna make sure that this is going to be a nice smooth edge for it, that it's gonna be fairly close to being finished. So we don't have to do a lot when the wood is actually in there. I don't have to go through and sand it a lot and additional fairing in here. Right now with this one being in place, we can see this crack is all over. What we've done is just made this little temporary piece of pine, um, covered it with plastic, so it's it's a good release then. And once I get this perfectly aligned here, we'll get that in place, then I can just smear in some um, thickened resin. Right now we're just using that polyester, that Total Boat structural uh, polyester resin, filling that edge in, and it's gonna give me a good place for a straight edge. So it is very important that I get this square from side to side. It's gonna make my life so much easier when I'm making the actual doors, the inserts here. Because of the way it's set up, you can see it's a bigger gap up here, tighter down here, and a little broken area there. What it's gonna allow me to do is I can sand this hopefully down a bit more and then get this so it's a little bit closer to that edge. Yeah, I think once I shave off that little bit down at the bottom, it should be as tight as I can get it. The goal is to use as little bit of the structural filler as possible and get it along this, this stiff edge. I can say from here, it's within the lines. So if Tierra were here, he'd be like, good God, mate, you're gonna drive yourself crazy trying to get this perfect. Mm -hmm. And I would agree now. <laughs> okay, just make sure it stays. I am good with that. Uh, you can see the area that needs to get filled now. Down here, through there. Shooting around like boy band hair things in the way. Okay, so that's good. So now the last step is I'm going to take some styrene and clean up this whole surface here because otherwise, that structural putty it has fiberglass fibers in it. It's horrible to sand. Uh, it's not made for sanding. It's made for structural purposes. So hence structural putty. Hence structural putty. So the idea is I really don't want that stuff over my primer clean that edge up and it'll be good to go. So we will let that dry overnight and pop it off tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Ready to see if it works? I am ready. Oh, let me get in for a close up. Okay. All right. Come on, release. Yeah, without breaking anything, please. Without breaking it. And there it goes. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I don't know if you can see the line. Yeah, a little bit. So it needs to be sanded down, of course. Nice straight line. It did give us a nice straight line. Yeah. This will get primed again, and then we'll be able to bond in the actual white oak that we're using into this area so it looks all nice and neat and flush on either side. Again, it's going to be a little bit thicker than this. Cut the doors for it, paint this whole thing. Um, I want to get these pieces, actually the wood in place before I go through and paint because I got to imagine this isn't going to be an absolute perfect edge there. So we're going to need to go through and caulk it and fill it and that kind of stuff before we end up doing that. But uh, another step in the process. One step closer. Yeah, I have gone through now and done probably eight or nine of these. Um, have probably eight or nine more, so not that big of a deal. Um, again, once that's done, then we can move on to the next step. For the past couple of months, Justin and I have been working on the electrical system. Um, all these components that are now coming out. And it's actually one of the benefits that we have with this long build process is we're able to take advantage of these new kind of technologies that are coming out. The negative with it is each one of these things does take some development time. And we're seeing that with a lot of the components, a lot of the things that we're looking to install. We kind of figured we would have them in around now. Now you can see we're not even ready for them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now looking at it, I'm expecting more of these things to come probably mid to late summer is when we'll actually have these components, including like the hybrid system. The, since we're developing that with the Yanmar engine in mind, instead of what they're typically doing using the Beta with diesel, it's gonna be a little bit different components. And with Max Cruise now, I think they're on, just launched Hall 9 now. Um, they are rapidly moving through their inventory of hybrid components. And so we just, we just need to wait for, for our setup to come into play. And we're expecting that probably around September is when we should be able to get our hands on that and start that installation. But in the meantime, we're able to finish up the engine beds now that we have like kind of the system planned out and installed the strut and the prop shaft and all that kind of stuff. So those components are all gonna get installed soon. Hopefully we can finish up this fairing real soon and get some paint in here. And then I can actually start running wiring. Regardless of if we have battery inverter charger on hand or the uh, C Marine digital switching system on hand, I can start actually running all these wires real soon and get all these things in place. So when they do arrive, it's kind of more of a plug and play setup. One of the things Matt forgot to mention just a moment ago and is another very popular question we're getting asked right now, of course, about the fairing is why aren't you just using liners instead of spending all that time and killing yourselves fairing out these like outer surfaces such as the walls? And funnily enough, I was on um, my computer today looking at some old videos of the 2021 Annapolis Boat Show because when we were on the Kinetic, they had some like little push tabs or knobs for all of the cabinets that I really want to get. And when we were talking about the Kinetic, we actually discussed this question kind of in depth. So instead of going over it again, I'm just going to uh, show that segment that we did before because it's got some pretty nice B-roll too of the Kinetic, which I love. That minimalistic design is kind of essential for weight. Uh, we need to, again, keep the weight down. That's, that's the reason we're building this boat, is to have a performance boat, so we need to keep the weight down. So we're not gonna have any of the hardwoods that we did on the last boat or the boat before that. Um, which again, I absolutely love that design. It was very appropriate for the metal boat and very appropriate for the design of Serendipity or Sabre um, before that as well. Those heavy woods and that heavy wood look just in a performance catamaran that doesn't look right. It's, it's two kind of opposing things. So we need to keep that minimalistic style, which I know some people kind of liken it to an Ikea interior, um, but there, there's a reason for that. It's not just a, um, a cost situation. It's because every single time you add anything over the top, an extra layer or an extra piece of trim, we're adding weight for no structural benefit, it's just for cosmetics. Right. And then that kind of, again, just kind of defeats the whole purpose. So the, the idea is we're gonna have mostly painted surfaces with wood trim, veneers applied to things like our, our cabinet doors, yeah. um, most likely, and maybe just a little trim piece, uh, and maybe the, the doors themselves that are leading in between the bulkheads into the different areas. Abandon more.
Japan.